If you want to hear about the origin of the creatures from this movie, stick around to the end of this video. Okay, I don't think they can hear us here. I just ran up to the surface to grab as many things you missed as I could from the new movie A Quiet Place. I'm going to try to tell you all of them and answer some of your questions from the film. As someone who has done sound professionally, it should be a lot of fun talking about some of the concepts in this movie and why the characters did what they did. But keep it down. They are listening. The beginning of the film offers a lot of clues as to how the creature's takeover went down. We see the Abbott family wander into an abandoned town. Yes, their last name is Abbott. It's only ever shown on the mailbox and in the credits. This is 89 days into the takeover. The town is abandoned, but not completely destroyed. There's a board filled with missing posters, something you've seen a lot of if you watch things you missed regularly. But this is our first clue. It tells us that the takeover happened gradually. It wasn't a massive attack on mankind, it just started as a couple missing people. There isn't really a lot of damage to the town, but we do see a stoplight overturned, which could also be a hint. Later on in the movie, we see the mom go into the basement and turn the string lights from yellow to red. The red lights emit a high-pitched sound, which seems to drive the creatures crazy, or at least distract them in some way. So likely what happened here is the creatures struck down the light out of anger or confusion, which happens to be a hint towards what their ultimate weakness is at the end of the movie. So then I found myself asking, how bad is this apocalypse? How many survivors are there? The plot doesn't give us a direct answer, but I was able to scrape together some evidence. And as a quick side note, that's one of the things I liked about the movie. I was thinking recently about the Metroid Prime trilogy, and how unique the storytelling is with how there aren't really any scenes in the games for the most part. But there is still really detailed world building and backstory if you explore all of the world by examining things, reading journals, and drawing your own conclusions. I've come to call this technique indirect storytelling, but I had also come to the conclusion that it wouldn't really work for a movie, but I think A Quiet Place kind of pulls it off. So back to the question, who are the survivors? In the first scene where the dad lights the fire on top of the corn silo, we see a couple of other fires in the distance, which tells me that there are other survivors nearby, but they are few and far between. One of the survivors could be the old man that the father and son encounter in the woods, but I guess he loses hope when the monsters get to his wife and he kills himself by screaming out and letting them get to him. So the number of families near the Abbots is dwindling, and it's probably good that they don't live near each other anyways for safety's sake. But I think there are other survivors in other places. The most interesting one to me comes from a newspaper headline pinned to the wall in the basement, which reads, Go Underground. Later in the movie, we essentially see that going underground to isolate any noise you might make seems to work pretty well because they're able to speak to each other in the underground nursery. That's why I'm making this video down here. I'd be interested to see this world though from the perspective of someone who successfully hid out underground. There could even be a whole underground city for all we know, but if it gets too big, it could mean trouble. Leave a like on this video if that's a movie you'd like to see in the future. More evidence we have of other survivors is shown in a scene where the dad uses his broadcast equipment to reach out to other countries. We see him cross countries off of a long list, and it doesn't look like he ever made contact with any of them, but that doesn't mean that there aren't other survivors out there. I think there are just other families like the Abbots, but they probably don't have access to broadcast equipment. And the last evidence of other survivors is that the power still works. They have electricity, so there's gotta be someone out there running a power plant of some kind. A generator wouldn't work because it would make too much noise. And while we're on the topic of what they do to keep the noise level down, I thought I'd explain some of the ones you might not have picked up on. Some of these might be obvious, but I think you'll learn a few things. The best thing you can do to reduce unwanted sound is to soften the point of impact, which slows down the impact and reduces both volume and reverberation. If you knock on a hard object, it's obviously going to be louder than if you knock on a soft object. Sound waves work the same way. So when I record these videos, I use these foam sound panels to try to deaden the sound. The Abbots take this concept and apply it wherever they can. They paste old newspapers up around the nursery, they put empty egg cartons on the furniture. Not only are they soft, but the irregular angles bounce sound waves in different directions and help reduce echo. The mobile above the baby's bed has plush swans, which should also help prevent the baby from crying. I mean, theoretically, of course. The Monopoly pieces they use are soft shapes, the dice appear to be hard, which is why they roll them on a soft blanket. The daughter's room is filled with stuffed dogs, pillows, anything to dampen the sound. Obviously, they can't use a laundry machine, but having a clothesline in front of the house that's always loaded up with clothing is a great idea, especially considering how much of a wide open area they live in. It could be very helpful to dull some of the sounds that escape the house and keep them from getting too far. You probably noticed that they never wear shoes, 
and a mattress is a perfect door to the bunker because it's literally the most soundproof thing they have. I could go on and on, but I think you get the point. There were only a couple questions I had about their practices, so let's open up a discussion in the comments. Quietly. The first thing I'd noticed was that they have a refrigerator, which makes noise when plugged in. I'm guessing they just have it off all the time and maybe use it as a cooler to slow down the time it takes for food to get warm. My other question was about the fire he starts each night. I would think the crackle of the fire would be loud enough to attract those creatures. Next, I'm going to talk about the origins of these creatures. I'll be looking to answer a few questions like, where do they come from? How many are there? When does this movie take place? How are the Abbots able to beat them? And why do they kill? Based on the evidence I saw in the movie, I think these creatures are aliens. Remember how I said the takeover wasn't immediate? I think these aliens came to Earth in a small group and gradually reproduced to cover the globe. Sound would not be an issue for them in outer space because sound can't travel in space, and their home planet probably has very little atmosphere for sound to travel upon as well. There are also numerous references to space left by the film's art department. The original toy that sets off the first killing is a rocket ship. The sun's pillowcase and window have stars on them. Newspaper headlines refer to the National Guard declaring a state of emergency, and the Monopoly pieces they used resemble a star and planet. So how many aliens are there? Like I said, they multiply, but the dad identifies that he thinks there are three in the area, and at the end we see that there are more than that, but I think there are actually many, many more than that. We saw how fast these things can move, and it's pretty fast, but it never takes more than a few seconds for one to strike after a noise. There's also a night scene early on in the movie where you can hear their cries in the distance, and it seems there are way, way more in the area. When does the movie take place? We can actually determine that pretty accurately. The movie starts on day 89 of the invasion. That's the day their four-year-old dies. His memorial reads 2016 to 2020. Just over one year later, on day 473, we see a calendar dated October 3rd, and that's most likely 2021, and that's where the rest of the movie takes place. The weekdays don't seem to line up with our real-world calendar, though. I know a lot of people are going to ask why the daughter's hearing aid hurt the aliens. Despite these aliens having incredibly sensitive eardrums, we can assume their hearing works on the same principles. Like humans, they have a range of frequencies that they can hear. The hearing aid just takes certain frequencies and amplifies them. However, the alien's enormous ears, like any microphone, are generating some self-noise. So the hearing aid is picking up those frequencies and making them louder. And then the alien's ears are taking those amplified sounds and emitting more self-noise. The result is a feedback loop. If you've ever been in a video chat without headphones, you've probably experienced this. It's not a pleasant sound. However, I'm guessing that the sound being amplified is mostly outside the human range of hearing. But if the aliens have a wider range of hearing, much like dogs do, the feedback loop probably drives them crazy and hurts them. That kind of leads into why these aliens kill. There's no evidence anywhere of them eating their victims or collecting food. They probably just kill because the sounds we make are extremely annoying to them. Much how I may one day kill West Dakota. But that will have to wait till another day because today I just have to keep quiet from these aliens. If you're looking for some more great horror, you should check out these island horror stories I wrote. Barely anyone saw this video and I honestly think it's the best video I've ever written. The great part is you can just throw in some headphones and listen to these scary stories and you shouldn't have to worry about the aliens coming after you. That's gonna do it for this episode of Things You Missed. I can't believe it, but I somehow did the whole episode without tipping off those creatures. So remember to subscribe to CZ's World for new horrors every week, ring that death bell for notifications, and